Welcome back to Morning Break, and today is Monday Motivations brought to you by Gates Brain Health. And Dr. Randall Gates is a board-certified chiropractic neurologist and a chiropractic physician. He's a familiar face on the show, and we know that when you feel healthy and strong, you are better equipped to live the life that you want, and that is what Dr. Gates is here to help us achieve. So welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> we yes. are excited because I think what's really interesting about you is that you are a chiropractic neurologist, mm -hmm. which are kind of like almost still a lot of people's minds, two separate things. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. chiropractic mm -hmm. care and then neurology. Right. So would right. you mind kind of explaining how you combine the two? Uh, yeah, it's kind of a lengthy answer, but you know, the long and short of it is that chiropractic neurologists, think of them as a personal trainer for your brain. I like that. It's something that not a lot of people do. So depending on the condition, it could be a concussion, people have damage, micro damage to their brain. And we need to go in and activate certain areas to start getting circuits working well again while also being attentive to, are they eating something that's inflaming their body because what inflames your body inflames your brain. Okay. Yeah. Yes, so I'm that's tracking what we with do. you. Yeah. So it's a little bit more holistic, whole body approach mm -hmm. to brain health. It is, and in our logo, it's a picture of like a plant with a mm -hmm. brain on top of it, and so much of what we do is how the gut nourishes the brain or does not nourish the brain. Okay, so yeah. for a lot of people, they'll typically go to a standard neurologist and perhaps get an MRI, which we have a picture of. Mm -hmm here. Can you let's talk about the standard MRI that people will get and then we'll go into what you do differently. Mm -hmm. And I have tremendous respect for my medical neurology colleagues and I think it's important that individuals understand that something like the standard MRI is the standard of care. You're going to see gray and white matter, you're going to see tumors, strokes, signs of MS. Those are the potentialities. I mean there's more than that. Yeah. But it's standard neurological medical diagnosis. That's what your brain MRI is showing you. And it's good if it comes back normal, but lots of times the people that come to me say, oh, my brain MRI was normal, but now what? Yeah, I still don't I, feel good. Right, I'm still suffering, my memory's still bad, I still have brain fog, what do I do? And I think that's where some of my knowledge comes in. Right, and so let's go for to that. So <coughs> let's hear, we're gonna start first with, what is it called, the NeuroQuant, which is a good one for if your memory is suffering. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, the NeuroQuant is wonderful. It's uh, wonderful technology in that it tells us the density of each area of your brain compared to 3,000 age-matched normals. Wow. Meaning someone can start to have a memory disorder that can literally take sometimes 20 to 30 years to become full-blown dementia. Really? But why don't we start addressing this at an earlier age, particularly if you have a family history of it? Right. So we can do this type of scan in addition to the standard brain MRI, and it will tell us, is somebody likely to have dementia? Are they tracking that way? And then can we do something to maybe prevent it? Okay. I'm not saying we can yeah. for sure, but, but that's that's the hope. But catching things early exactly. is Exactly, yeah, yeah, and then start being proactive. Especially family history. Are there any right. other signs that people should kind of look for to be like, hey, I may be only 30, but I'm nervous that this might apply to me and I yeah, should get Yeah, and at? I think particularly given the past two years, the stress, all of mm -hmm. the infections that people have been through, a lot of people are now suffering with brain fog and memory loss. It's just inundated our clinic now. Yeah. With that type of complaint. That's super interesting. So the yeah. next one that you do on um, the next test is called a lesion quant. Mm -hmm. And this one you said is really good for MS specifically. And I'm really passionate about this because so many MS patients that I see, you know, they, they get the yearly MRI and they're told, yeah, it, it's relatively about the same or you have a couple new lesions. Um, but there's not a lot of quantitative uh, elements that they can grab onto. Again, not knocking anything, but the lesion quant is a type of sequence that tells us exactly how many lesions a person has. So if you wanna know if your MS is getting worse, the lesion quant will really tell us that, in addition to the radiology read. And so the lesion quant is a test that you would typically get after you've already been diagnosed with MS and now or, you're tracking it? Yeah, or if a doctor is suspecting MS, okay. then it's also a good time because it tells us exactly where the lesions are, exactly how many there mm -hmm. are. So if you're taking a medication for your MS or doing some other treatment, then it's good to know are we slowing it down or are you still progressing? Yeah, okay, so the last one we wanna talk about is concussions. A lot yeah. of research being done into concussions and that's where this test called DTI comes in. Yeah, DTI is so cool because concussion You're almost- You're such a nerd, <laughs> did you hear that? He's like, DTI is it so really cool. Is. <laughs> yeah, because so many concussion patients, what happens? They hit their head, they go to the ER, they get a CT scan, they're told they're normal mm -hmm. and then they just go home and wait and hopefully they get better and if they don't, 
you know, it's a really tough road. So mm -hmm. diffusion tensor imaging tells us exactly if there is damage to the white matter of the brain. So we know there's damage from concussions, but concussion patients are not getting this technology. And so it is out there. Mm -hmm. And so this will tell us you have damage to this part of your brain that affects your emotional processing area. How many concussion patients have anger or depression or PTSD afterwards? And so we can really give them a baseline, say, here's where you're at, let's enact a therapy and then do another scan in three or six months. That is amazing, Dr. Gates. Okay, yeah. so if you're listening to this and you've been to the doctors, you've gotten the test, but you want more information about what exactly is going on inside your brain, Dr. Gates here is the person you wanna go to. And um, with that, if you wouldn't mind giving us one simple little nugget as to how can we help our brain get healthier? What would you say it was like kind of a daily thing we can do? A daily thing, I think in general, a diet of vegetables, fruits, and meats okay. is probably healthy. I can't give everybody that recommendation. <laughs> there are great books out there yeah. uh, for the MS patients. Dr. Walls mm -hmm. wrote a great book. Dr. Perlmutter has a lot of books for general brain health. Okay. Um, those moms who have yes. children with ADHD or ADD, there's a lot of great books on food dyes <laughs> and maybe how gluten and dairy are affecting them. So That's super interesting because we always think of like nutrition for gut health and now we're talking about it and how it applies to brain exactly. health. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. The next well, frontier. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Dr. Gates. Thank we'll you. be right back after this quick break.